डॉक्टर गौरव द्विवेदी सर अभिषेक प्लीज गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून सर आई वॉम वेलकम टू यू सर एंड गौरव द्विवेदी डॉक्टर गौरव द्विवेदी सर हैज कम्प्लीटेड इज बी टेक इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग फ्रॉम आई के जी पी यू जलंधर एम टेक इन एनर्जी सिस्टम फ्रॉम आई आई टी रोरके एंड पी एच डी इन द फील्ड ऑफ रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी बायोफ्यूल फ्रॉम आई आई टी रोरके इंडिया ही हैज नाइन ईयर्स ऑफ टीचिंग एक्सपीरियंस इन द फील्ड ऑफ मैकेनिकल एंड एनर्जी इंजीनियरिंग एंड थॉट वेरियस सब्जेक्ट्स लाइक आई सी इंजिन थर्मोडाइनामिक्स फ्लूड मशीनरी बायो एनर्जी एंड अदर एट वेरियस इंस्टीट्यूट लाइक वी आई टी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ वेल्लोर एंड अमित यूनिवर्सिटी नोएडा Currently, he is working as assistant professor in the Energy Center at Maulana Azad National Institute of Technology, Bhopal, India. His area of interest in biodiesel production methodology, enhancement in the fuel properties, and application of biofuel on the engine operation. He has published more than hundred papers in various international journals and conferences. He got more than fifty papers in SCA and Scopus Index journals. He has published one book with the international publisher along. Uh, with that he has contributed five book chapters he got ang scientist award at nit trichy for his contribution in the field of renewable energy he is an active member of institute of engineering india and solar energy society of india and ieee he also served as a guest editor for material today processing and journal of traffic and transportation recently he also featured in the top 2% scientist of the world from india all fields by the survey conducted by the stanford university a warm welcome to you sir we are very thankful to have you here sir thank you sir shall i start the session yes sir yes sir yes sir okay, okay. Uh, good afternoon to all of you and uh, i would like first uh, like to thank the organizing team dr savin kashyap and other coordinator for uh, organizing this uh, atal fdp is it visible yes sir it's visible sir okay so the topic of the atal fdp is uh, green technology and sustainability engineering and uh, uh, we are going to discuss about the some aspects of the green engineering which is most prominently related to the solar energy and uh, before going to the uh, part of the solar energy uh, we will start from the why we are focusing on the green technology of the people in the talk were from different background so we will not go deep into the technicalities we will go on the brief about the what are the various aspects of the this uh, solar energy and its application but uh, when we talk about the green energy there are uh, as the at a world level there is a global goals for sustainable development were formulated during the conference of paris is a conference of parties where there were some specific topics which were marked and highlighted that these should be in focus like there should not be any poverty we should address the zero hunger good health and well being quality education gender equality clean water and sanitation affordable and clean energy as a energy engineer as a mechanical or electrical or any type of engineering the most important aspect as a green in the area of the green energy we should focus on the affordable and clean energy to everyone all around the world so our focus is on the goal number 7 along with that there are other parameter decent work and economic growth industry innovation and infrastructure reduced inequality sustainable cities and community responsible consumption and production climate action life below water life on land peace and justice strong institution partnerships for the goal but the most important is affordable and clean energy which is 
mostly related to us. So from that we have formulated some uh, targets and uh, targets are like that by 2030 ensure universal access to the affordable, reliable and modern energy services. By 2030, increase the substantially the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix. By 2030, double the global rate of improvement in the energy efficiency. And then, by 2030, enhance international cooperation to facilitate access to clean energy research and technology, including renewable energy. These are the targets which are formulated by our own country, India. In the terms, when we talk about the enhanced international cooperation in the field of the research, there are two types of uh, uh, an international cooperation. Like one, uh, one the international cooperation is related to the, like uh, our Prime Minister has initiated the Solar Alliance mission in which more than, more than 100 countries are participated and working in the area of the solar energy. Along with that, we are uh, we have a tie up with the countries like nepal and bhutan and we are building large hydropower plants in the in those countries we have built the infrastructure in the form of dam road construction in the the war driven this uh, afghanistan so these type of international cooperation in the area of the renewable energy and clean energy we are doing Another type of, uh, which is research-based cooperation, uh, you have heard there are various uh, agencies like uh, DST, SERP, which are, uh, which are time to time putting the notice regarding the Indo-US uh, joint research program, Australian joint research program, and other Asian countries joint research program. In those research program and research project, we are, uh, we as a, individual as a group of faculty member research scholars we combined with the with the university with the university with foreign affiliation and work in that area so this type of international cooperation to develop some product in the and also some produce some patent so we are working this type of enhancing the international cooperation other than that by 2030 expand the infrastructure and upgrade the technology for supplying modern and sustainable energy services for all in the developing countries, in particular least developed countries, small island developing state, and landlocked developing countries in accordance with their respective program of support. Now, India as a INDC target, India has set its own target. When we talk about the India's target, India plan to reduce the emission intensity of its GDP by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 from 2005 level, 40 percent cumulative electric power install capacity from non fossil fuel based energy sources by 2030, a jump of 33 percent over non fossil fuel capacity by of 2015 to create an additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion ton of CO2 equivalent means we are a uh, uh, we are planting more trees by additionally covering the forest area by 2030. Then for uh, fulfilling these uh, targets, we required USD 2.5 trillion to meet this climate action change demand between now and 2030. When we talk about the renewable energy, India has an ambitious renewable energy goal the renewable energy goals in the area of solar and wind, we will increase the capacity from 2015 level 4060 megawatt and 23.76 gigawatt to 100 gigawatt to 60 gigawatt by 2022. We are working on that. We are moving in that direction very rapidly. We also, we have targeted to increase the biomass capacity to 10 gigawatt by 2022 from the current capacity of 4.4 gigawatt. A special program to promote a small and mini hydro project, new and efficient design of water mills have been introduced for electrification of remote village and will continue to be promoted. Actually, in the in our country, we are not promoting the large hydropower project. 
there are various issues associated with the large hydropower project they affect the ecology and environment of that particular area there is a diversion of the river so these are the problem which we are the facing other than that we have to rehabilitate and resettlement cost is on very high side sometime it is uh, more than the project cost so due to all these reason and recently you have heard about the climatic tragedy in the area of the uttarakhand where the whole uh, hydropower washed away due to all those reasons we are not promoting the large hydropower project in our country we are promoting the small hydropower project small hydropower projects are generally the hydropower projects which are less than capacity of uh, 25 megawatt so they can be built in a in a with the uh, connected with the grid or they can be developed as a stand alone system in a rural area in a remote area in a hilly area where there is a no connectivity with the grid the hydropower will be there and it will supply the power to that entire village and it will connect to uh, the the village will connect to the main city through uh, through the power from the hydropower so we are developing these type of small and mini hydropower project other than that the nuclear energy will be promoted from the current capacity of from 5780 megawatt to 63 gigawatt by year 2032 we are developing the ultra nuclear power project the one of the nuclear recent nuclear power project kundukulam nuclear power project is in, is in operation other than that jatapur nuclear power project is also in developing phase then uh, we are one of the we got one of the largest reserve of the flow coal so uh, when we talk about the coal the quality of our coal is not that much so it can be used in a thermal power plant or directly uh, it, it it created some issues related to the emission so we are working on the clean coal technology which will promote the increase in the efficiency standard and old inefficient thermal power plant will be assigned mandatory target for improving the energy efficiency now when we talk about the future target the government has announced that no new coal based capacity addition is required beyond the 50 gigawatt under different stages of construction likely to come online between 17 to 22 target 2022 capacity 170 gigawatt excludes nuclear and large hydropower project include 600 gigawatt of solar already discussed 60 gigawatt of wind 5 gigawatt of small hydro and 10 gigawatt of biomass and 0.16 gigawatt of waste to power target 2030 capacity to 450 gigawatt includes nuclear and large hydropower with 15 times solar and two times wind power capacity increase compared to april 2016 install capacity so these are the future targets now when we talk about the present requirement of energy india ranks the second in the terms of population around the world 17% of world overall population and india is globally ranked third in the consumption of energy in terms of installed capacity and investment in renewable energy the primary energy consumption is giving by 2.3% in the year 2019 the total primary energy consumption from coal is given 452.2 million tons that is nearly or most most consumption is through the coal that is nearly about 46% after that the crude oil 26% natural gas 6% nuclear energy 1% hydro 3.91% renewable energy 3.4% and and excluding the biomass in the calendar year 2018 so still we are in developing field in when we say about the uh, renewable energy mostly we are dependent on the the conventional source like uh, coal and crude oil so this is the picture of energy demand in, in in india you can see this is the forecast and uh, maximum consumption is through coal only this is the install capacity you can see there is a increase in the capacity of all the energy sources large hydropower small hydropower solar wind in case of solar you can see drastic Im improve improvement in the install capacity from 4.6 uh, to up to 50.1 similarly in the case of wind we are also working in that direction hmm. the biomass is almost in constant phase but we are mostly focusing on the solar and wind 
ऑनेस्ट एंड यंग रनबल एंड कंट्री अट्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स रैंक इंडिया थर्ड बिहाइंड यूएसए एंड जापान चाइना इन 2016 पेरिस एग्रीमेंट आईएनडीसी टारगेट टू कट दी सप्लाई बाय 50 परसेंट फ्रॉम नॉन फॉसिल फ्यूल सोर्सेस वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इंडिया सेंट्रल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी अथॉरिटी हैज सेट अ टारगेट ऑफ प्रोड्यूसिंग 50 परसेंट ऑफ टोटल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी फ्रॉम नॉन फॉसिल फ्यूल बाय 2030 सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी सेट दी टारगेट नाउ मूविंग फ्रॉम दैट यू हैव ऑलरेडी सीन द पिक्चर दैट वी आर मोस्टली फोकसेस ऑन दी दी एनर्जी रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी दैट इज दी सोलर एंड विंड that is that is our uh, more more focusing area in the field of renewable energy the great thing about the solar power that it is a technology and not a fuel it is unlimited and more it is deployed the cheaper it would be so you are if you are uh, uh, you are installing large number of solar panels the cost is going to come down in the longer period of time the calculated solar energy incidence on the land area is about the 5000 trillion kilowatt hour per year the solar energy available in a single year exceeds the possible energy output of the all the fossil fuel energy reserves in the india this is the one aspects of the solar energy you cannot directly come to the conclusion that is the one aspect you have to see that now top eight installed capacity uh, eight countries for installation and total installed capacity in 2019 for cumulative capacity of the solar you can see the china usa japan germany and india india is also one of the uh, ranking country in the terms of the installed capacity we are working on that when we talk about the application of solar power there is a solar photovoltaic solar thermal power hybrid solar plants solar heating grid stabilization now solar photovoltaic the average bid in the reverse auction in the april 2017 is rupees 3.15 per kilowatt hour compared with 12.16 per kilowatt hour in 2010 which is 73% drop over the time window the statement uh, here is given going to show that as as we are moving in the uh, moving uh, moving ahead the cost of the solar is going to come down because many people are working in the area of solar photovoltaic solar cell battery so the prices are going to come down due to the new invention use of cheap material and various alternative technology and tools available solar pv generation cost fell to rupees 2.97 per kilowatt for the 750 megawatt riva ultra mega solar power project this is the recent power project in march 2021 the discovery discovered levelized terrific tariff was rupees 2.20 per kilowatt hour after the imposition of basic custom duty and imported solar pv panel and cell many companies are working in the area now due to the pli scheme the various industry are going to benefit in the this particular area of the development of solar panel and the cell price history of silicon pv cell you can see from 76 dollar to 0.30 dollar and The, the, you can see the, the drastically decrease in the price now when we talk about the solar thermal power uh, the installed capacity of the commercial solar thermal power plant in, in india is about 227.5 megawatt we cannot say it is a, a big uh, number but it is there the existing solar thermal power plant in india which are generating costly intermittent power on a daily basis can be converted into a The storage type solar thermal power to generate three to four more times base load power at the cheaper cost and not depend on the government subsidies. Then we have a hybrid solar plant. Solar power plants can be installed near existing hydro power and pump storage hydro electricity, utilizing the existing power transmission infrastructure and storing the surplus secondary power generated by the solar PV plants. Solar power generated mainly due to the daytime in the non-monsoon period complements wind, which generate more power during the monsoon months in the India. So this type of hybrid can be developed. Generating hot water or air or steam using concentrated solar reflector. Bangalore has the largest deployment of rooftop solar water heater in India, generating an energy equivalent of 200 megawatt. It is India's first city to provide a rebate of rupees fifty on monthly electricity bill for residents using the rooftop solar system. Pune has also made solar water heater mandatory in new buildings. So these type of initiatives are very good in promoting these specific policies. Solar power plants equipped with the battery storage system, where net energy metering is used, can feed storage 
electricity into the power grid when it is frequency is below the rated parameter that is the 50 hertz and draw excess power from the grid when its frequency is above the rated parameter excursions above and below the rated grid frequency occur about 100 times daily the solar plants owner would receive nearly double the price for electricity sent into the grid compared to that of consumed from the grid if a frequency based tariff is offered to a rooftop solar plant or plant dedicated to a distribution substation now all when uh, we have uh, discussed all the technologies now we will move to what is main component of the this uh, solar photovoltaic system when we talk about the solar photovoltaic system the main component of solar photovoltaic system is the battery it's behave like a, uh, we can say, we can say it is a heart or brain of the spv system and how it works you have to understand that this is a very important aspect when we talk about the spv storage in a standalone photovoltaic power system the most important and most poorly understood component is the battery purpose of the battery in the pv system in the standalone pv system the electrical energy is provided by the pv array and cannot always be used when it is produced because the demand for energy does not always considered with the production electrical storage batteries are commonly used in pv system sometimes it have what it happens when you are producing power the demand is not on their side then you have to store that energy and for that battery comes into the picture other feature other important aspect that the solar in the in the case of the solar the energy is producing during the daytime and when the energy requirement at night night time we require the battery the three primary functions of a storage battery in a PV system are energy storage capacity and autonomy to store electrical energy when it is produced by the PV array and to supply energy to the electrical load as needed on demand voltage and current stabilization to supply power to electrical load at a stable voltage and a current by suppressing or smoothing and transient that may occur in a PV system then supply the surge current to supply surge or high peak operating current to electrical load uh, or appliances pv devices are inherently current limited in their output by the short circuit current and irradiance pv array by itself may not be able to supply enough current to meet the surge requirement of some electrical loads now battery operation in a pv system battery in a pv system used for a specified condition and these condition must be considered when pv systems are designing one of the most important term in the battery operation is cycling which is explained below what is meant by cycling one of the parameter that distinguish battery type is their ability to cycle a battery cycle refers to the process of charging and discharging in a battery like a take of uh, the example of mobile batteries when you charge the battery, it, it, it starts from 0 to 100 percent and when you are using the mobile, it decreases from 100 percent to 0 percent. So, charging 0 to 100 and 100 to 0, that is the total uh, called as a one cycle. Similarly, in case of the PV battery, PV battery discharge is the process that occur when a battery delivers current quantified by the discharge current rate. Charging is the process when a battery receives or accepts current quantified by the charge current or a rate a discharge followed by a charge is considered as a one cycle a discharge followed by a charge is considered as a one cycle battery cycling one discharge and recharge is called one cycle battery life depends upon how deep and how many times the battery cycled battery designed for silo cycling will work but for short time period solar system needs deep cycling batteries like this is your battery and this is availability for use this is the portion 
and this is your one day use second day use after some time period of time when there is a, a minimum amount of charge left then you have to again the charge the battery the discharge can be very small or a shallow or it can be very severe or very deep it depend upon the your uses like for example again we compare it with the mobile battery when you start playing a game or a playing a video or playing a movie on your mobile the discharging of the battery increases and it will increases uh, in a in a rapid way with the time period it will you cannot uh, use it for uh, use the mobile for uh, uh, two or three days when we are running these applications but if you change your application uses like if you are using only phone calls or for text messages or for some basic uh, applications then you can use your mobile for one day two day or up to three days it depends upon your uh, battery capacity so it depends upon our uses how we are using the battery now in the case when uh, when when the system if it the system is connected to the solar pv system is connected to the grid or it's some other sources then it may not use the battery energy which is already stored but if there is a no power supply from the grid and it is a standalone system then on the what then what happen on daily basis during the daytime you are getting the energy from solar you are storing in a battery but during the night time for all the operations you you are extracting the energy from the battery so you have to uh, charge the battery uh, as per the power need or power consumption 100% depth of discharge uh, cycle provides a measure of total battery capacity at a given discharge rate all battery can be cycled but the question is how deeply and how many times before a permanent loss of capacity occurs similarly people are uh, like uh, what happens when you purchase a uh, again i am comparing with the mobile because it is easy to understand for the people of the to understand the concept of the battery when you purchase a new mobile and you charge it uh, what will happen it uh, charges rapidly the battery work uh, well with the time you can run as many as application but after period of one year or six months or depending upon uses also then what happens the quality or the total effectiveness of your battery goes down it, it it will not behave like a new one so after a few some period of time after three year four year there will be a permanent loss of the capacity occurs in case of the battery battery used in a photovoltaic application will be definitely be subjected to cycling on daily basis and perhaps deep cycled occasionally now what is charge discharge rate expense time battery manufacturers often refers to rate of charge or discharge not in ampere but the time it would take to completely charge or discharge the battery at a specific current now the rate of charge or discharge of battery is expressed as a ratio of nominal battery capacity to the charge or discharge time period in hours for example a 100 ampere battery is discharging at the rate of 2 ampere the time to complete discharge a fully charged battery at this rate will be 100 ampere by 2 ampere that will be 50 hours so we would say that the battery is discharging at 50 hour rate or c by 50 now what is mean by depth of discharge the depth of discharge of a battery is defined as a percentage of a battery that has been withdrawn from a battery compared to the total fully charged capacity by definition the depth the depth of the discharge and the state of charge battery to the 100 percent like if you look at your mobile if the mobile shows that 75 percent of battery is available the 75 percent of the battery is known as the state of charge and the 25 percent which you have already used or consumed that is known as the depth of discharge now the addition of uh, state of charge plus the depth of discharge is the total charging capacity of the battery now the total common qualifier for the depth of discharge in pv system is the allowable or maximum depth of discharge and the average daily depth of discharge are described there are two things one is allowable depth of discharge and second is average daily depth of discharge the number of the day of reserve or autonomy is the main factor that determines the size of the battery and therefore the magnitude of the 
daily battery depth of the discharge greater the number of the days of autonomy seized into the battery the larger the total capacity and therefore the smaller the percentage used each day for a typical daily cycle the relationship between the days of autonomy and depth of discharge for deep cycle batteries maximum allowable depth of discharge is 80% and for shallow cycle battery maximum allowable depth of discharge is 50% now what is the state of charge the state of charge i already discussed is defined as the amount of energy available in a battery expressed as a percentage of energy stored in a fully charged battery when the battery is fully charged the state of charge is 100% while depth of discharge is 0% when the battery is fully discharged the depth of discharge is 100% the state of charge is 0% discharging a battery result in a decrease in a state of charge while charging a result in increase in the state of charge a battery that has a three quarter of its capacity removed or being discharged 75% is said to be 25% state of charge the figure in the next slide is state the seasonal variation in a battery state of charge and depth of discharge for a typical pv system so this is the seasonal variation in the, in the summer and in the winter for the this uh, depth of discharge and state of charge how in summer battery behaves and how in winter now as per the standard 50 to 500 to 100 thousand cycles to a 15% mainly maximum daily discharge 50% maximum allowable depth of discharge this is for shallow cycle battery for deep cycle battery 3000 to 4000 cycle at 25% depth of discharge and 500 to 1800 cycle to 80% maximum allowable depth of discharge then the terms comes what is the battery capacity capacity is a measure of battery ability to store or deliver electrical energy commonly expressed in terms of ampere hour the ampere hour is the common unit or measure of a battery electrical storage capacity obtained by integrating the discharge or charge current in ampere over a specified time period an ampere hour is equal to a transfer of 1 ampere over a 1 hour equal to 3600 coulomb of charge for example a battery which deliver 5 ampere for 20 hour is said to be delivered 100 ampere hour sometimes a battery energy store storage capacity is expressed in a kilowatt hour which can be approximated by multiplying the rated capacity in ampere hour by the nominal battery voltage and dividing the product by 1000 for example a nominal voltage one a 12 volt battery 100 ampere hour capacity has an average energy storage capacity is 12 into 100 by 1000 we can say 1.2 kilowatt hour so by this we are converting the ampere hour uh, into a kilowatt hour then factory affecting battery capacity capacity is generally specified at a specific discharge rate or over a certain time period the capacity of a battery depends upon several design factors including the quantity of active material the number design and physical dimension of the plate and the electrolyte specific gravity operational factor affecting capacity includes the discharge rate depth of discharge cut off voltage temperature age and cycle history of battery if what is the effect of temperature on the capacity cold temperature decreases the total capacity available from the battery cold temperature <coughs> pv system designer must be accurately aware of the effect of the temperature on the battery capacity battery manufacturers generally rate capacity at a temperature of 25 degree centigrade if the rated required battery size in pv system is calculated based on the expected capacity at 25 degree centigrade the battery may be too small to provide the storage necessary to achieve the design autonomy period during the cold temperature as a result battery could be severely discharged and the system load may not be satisfied additional battery capacity must be installed in a stand alone pv 
power system to compensate for the expected reduction in capacity at a low temperature. Standard temperature for the rated battery capacity is 25 degree. Battery capacity must be derated for low temperature operation. What is the discharge rate capacity? If you are, it depends upon the which type of application you are using from the battery. It actually, how you are using the battery, it will decide the discharge rating capacity of the battery. One is industrial motive application. It requires the discharge time 10 hour, photovoltaic application 100 to 300 hour. Maximum recommended depth of discharge for lead acid battery is shallow cycling type 50% and for deep cycling it is 80%. How we are going to calculate time to fully discharge? Time to fully discharge is calculated by how many days of reserve for which you have to require the battery. Then 24 hour per day upon maximum depth of discharge. What are the factors which affects the battery life? Lower the expected battery life is a common problem in a small alone PV, a small standalone PV application. Not only small standalone PV system, it when we are using battery in our daily life, we are facing this problem. And uh, when we uh, when we talk about the battery, like uh, if you take uh, when you are using the mobile battery or laptop battery, we are facing this type of problem that our battery is not performing as up to its full capacity. So there are many reasons behind that. The battery, how you are charging, how you are discharging, how you are using it. So battery bank is typically the second most expensive component in the most voltage power system next to PV array. Over a 20 to 30 years of life of a PV system, the replacement and maintenance cost for battery may be the highest life cycle component in a PV system. And for this reason, PV system designer and users should have a good understanding of the issues affecting the battery life. Battery lifetime is dependent upon the number of cell design and operational factor, including the component and the material of the battery construction, temperature, frequency, and depth of the discharge average state of charge and charging method. As long as battery is not overcharged or over discharged or operated at a specific, uh, excessive temperature, the lifetime of a battery is proportional to its average state of charge. What is maximum battery life? There are several general guidelines that can lead to the maximizing the useful life of the battery in a PV system. Cool operating, temperature, uh, cool operating temperature, shallow depth of discharge, prevention of overcharging and discharging. Sometimes what we do, we charge the battery and we forget to remove the, remove it, uh, remove the charging panel after a certain period of time that will lead to the overcharging. That is the one aspect we have to see. Proper and frequent maintenance and water addition, full recharge after discharging as soon as possible. Temperature affects the battery life, overcharging shortens the battery life, maintenance affects the battery life, fully recharging affects the battery life. Now, when we talk about the charging, discharging, then we have a battery efficiency. Battery efficiency is dependent on the type of the battery, charging methods, rate of charge and discharge, depth of discharge and temperature. In general, the efficiency of the battery is much greater at lower state of charge than when the battery is nearly full charge. The total or round trip battery energy efficiency is composed of two types of efficiency. There is a volta voltage or voltaic efficiency and a charge or a coulombic efficiency. Then bat battery voltage or voltaic efficiency. The voltaic efficiency of a battery is determined by the charge and discharge rate and the battery temperature. The voltaic efficiency is expressed as the ratio of the battery voltage under the discharge to the voltage under the charge. High rate and low temperature at acts to decrease battery life. Then we comes uh, one other terms that is the battery charge efficiency or coulombic efficiency. The coulombic or charge efficiency of the battery is defined as the ratio of 
ampere hour withdrawn from a battery during the discharge to ampere hour provided during the charge recharge of the battery at a low state of charge the battery capacity accepts current readily there is a little loss and the coulombic efficiency is high as a battery nears the full state of charge gassing and internal heating tends to reduce the coulombic efficiency battery coulombic efficiency is the discharge ampere hour output to the charge ampere or input we use coulombic efficiency in sizing calculation the coulombic efficiency used to calculate the pv or si is required in a photovoltaic system in a load estimation we will see how to calculate an average daily load demand in unit of ampere hour the pv or si must not only be sized to meet the load ampere hour demand but also overcome the battery coulombic inefficiency to determine the total ampere hour that the pv or si must produce we divide the total load demand by the estimated battery coulombic efficiency ampere hour pv or si must produce is daily load demand in ampere hour upon battery coulombic efficiency what is the battery round trip efficiency or energy efficiency the energy or round trip efficiency of a battery is defined as the product of coulombic and voltaic efficiency this efficiency defined as a ratio of energy withdrawn from a battery during the discharge to the amount of energy supplied to bring back a battery to its full state of charge this is the product of voltaic efficiency and the coulombic efficiency is like up to 0.8% or 80% now when we try, uh, talk about the storage battery in pv system what are the other components of the battery we before going for the sizing problem before going for calculation problem or before going into the design aspect we have to understand what are the various components of the battery also like some important components one is the cell cell is the basic electrochemical unit in a battery consisting of a positive and negative plates everyone know divided by separator immersed in an electrolyte solution enclosed in a case in a typical lead acid battery each cell has a nominal voltage about 2.1 volt and so there are six series in a cell and 12 volt volt uh, battery then we have a active material the active material in a battery are the raw composition material that form the positive and negative plates and are reactant in the electrochemical cell the amount of active material in a battery is import import to the capacity to the battery can deliver in lead acid battery the active material or lead oxide in the positive plate and metallic storage lead in the negative plate which react with the sulfuric acid solution during the which react with the sulfuric acid solution during the battery operation then we have a electrolyte electrolyte is a conducting medium which allow the flow of current through ionic transfer or transfer of the electrons between the plates in a battery in a lead acid battery the electrolyte is a diluted sulfuric acid solution grid In a lead acid battery, the grid is a typical lead alloy framework that support the active material on a battery plate, which also conduct current. Antimony and calcium are often used to strengthen the lead grids. Then we have a plate. Plate is a basic battery component, consists of a grid and active material. Some of the time period called an electrode. These are generally number of positive and negative plates in each battery cell, typically connected in a parallel in bus bar and connected at the top of the plate then we have a separator separator is a insulating divider between the positive and negative plates in our battery and used to keep the plates from coming into the electrical contacts and short circuiting current which also allow the flow of electricity ion between the positive and negative plates separators are made up of micro porous rubber plastic of glass wool mats elements an element is defined as a stack of positive and negative plates group and separators assembled together with plates strap interconnecting the positive and negative plates this is the basic construction diagram of a battery you can see the grid positive plate electrical load then there is a negative plate then there is a separator active materials are on both side then we have electrolyte as a conducting medium and overall whole material is covered with the one casing terminal post are the external positive and negative electrical connections to a battery a battery is connected in a pv system and to electrical load at the terminal post 
in a lead acid battery the post are generally lead or a lead alloy or a possibly stainless steel or copper plated steel for a greater corrosion resistance battery terminally may require periodic cleaning particularly for flooded designs then there is a important the cell blend, uh, cell vents during battery charging gases are produced within a battery that may be vented to the atmosphere in flooded design the loss of electrolyte through gas escape from the cell vents it is a normal occurrence and they require the periodic addition of water to maintain the proper electrolytic level in a sealed or wall ducted battery the vents are designed with a pressure relief mechanism remaining closed under normal condition but open during the higher than the normal battery pressure often the result of overcharging or high temperature operation case case made up of hard rubber or plastic case contain the plate separator and the electrolyte in a battery the case is typically enclosed with the exception of intercell connector which can attach the plate assembly from one cell to the next terminal post and the vent or the caps which allow gases product to escape and permit water addition if required clear battery cases or container allow for easy monitoring of electrolyte level and a battery plate condition for a very large or tall battery plastic cases are often supported with an external metal or a rigid plastic casing now after understanding the concept of the battery what are the various type of battery many type of types and classifications of battery are manufactured today each with specific design and performance characteristics suited for particular applications each battery type or design has its individual strength and weakness in pv system lead acid battery are the most commonly due to the wide availability in many size low cost and well understood performance characteristics in a few critical low temperature application nickel cadmium cells are used but there are high initial cost limits there used in most pv system there is no perfect battery and it is the task of the pv system designer to decide which battery type is mostly appropriate for each application in general electrical storage battery can be divided into a major category primary and secondary it depend upon the users primary battery what are the primary battery these primary battery can store and deliver electrical energy but cannot be recharged typical carbon zinc lithium battery commonly used in consumer electronic devices which are already which we normally used in our tv remote or ac remote these are known as primary battery primary batteries are not used in a pv system because they cannot be recharged what are the secondary battery secondary battery can store and deliver electric energy and can also be recharged by passing a current through it in a opposite direction to the discharge current commonly lead acid battery used in automotive uh, automobiles and pv system are secondary type of battery we generally use secondary type of battery for our uh, this uh, storage application so primary battery has uh, uh, when we talk about the cost aspect primary battery are uh, are not uh, are not uh, rechargeable so generally they are uh, they are less costly as compared to secondary battery these are various type of uh, battery like flooded lead acid battery the lead antimony lead calcium open vent lead calcium sealed vent lead antimony calcium hybrid captive then we have captive electrolyte lead acid gel absorbed glass metallic nickel then we have nickel cadmium centered plate and pocket plate the performance is there so when we talk about the cost when uh, the it require high maintenance performance is good the cost is low when the performance is good maintenance is medium the cost is going to on higher side so there are various factors uh, factors associated with the selection of the battery lead acid battery chemistry now the basic component of the uh, battery we have already discussed the everyone knows the we have a positive plate negative plate then we have electrolyte a solution and then we have a lead and lead uh, sulfate then we have a 
this reaction at the negative plate or electrode PV, PV2 positive plus 2 electron, PV2 positive plus sulfur, PVSO4. And overall reaction is PVO2, PVS2SO4 react to form PVSO4 plus H2O. So this type of basic uh, already chemical reaction we have already know. May mostly people know this, uh, uh, how the uh, positive and negative electrodes work and how the electric currents uh, produces in the these cells. Mm. Now, when we talk about the battery discharging, when a battery discharge, the chemical reaction on the plate proceeds inward towards the grid. The deeper the discharge, the deeper the chemical reaction occur in a lead acid battery, the lead sulfate molecule, they are, are formed are larger than the lead or lead oxide molecule and the bonding of the active material to the plates is gradually weakened due to the grid growth. Now, discharge reaction proceed inward towards the grid. And 100% discharge weakens the adhesion, increase assistance producing heat and degradation accelerates. What are the battery selection criteria? The selection of the battery for use in PV system involves many decisions and trade-offs and depend upon many factors. While no specific battery is appropriate for all PV applications, common sense and careful review of the battery literature with respect to the particular application needs will help the designer to narrow down the choice so there are various criteria and when we read each one of the criteria you can understand how these criteria are important when we are selecting a battery nominal system voltage which how much voltage required charge regulation requirement required capacity that or autonomy you cannot uh, you cannot procure a battery of larger size when the power requirement is low. So you have to uh, see into that. Then we have an ampere or capacity or a discharge rate, daily and maximum depth of discharge, self-discharge rate, how is the gassing characteristics of the particular battery behaves, what is the efficiency of the battery. Then we have a temperature effects, size, weight and structural need susceptibility to freezing, susceptibility to sulfation and stratification, electrolyte type and concentration, auxiliary equipments, maintenance required. Maintenance required is one of the most important aspects of aspect battery selection. Then we have a terminal configuration, battery life cycle per year, availability and shipping requirement, cost and warranty. There are various problems when we discuss about the battery. Forming is the process of initial battery charging during the manufacture. Formation of lead acid battery changes the lead oxide on the positive plate grid to lead dioxide and to a metallic sponge lead on the negative plate. The extent to which the battery has been formed during manufacture dictates the need for additional cycle in the field to achieve the rated capacity. Stratification is the condition that can occur in a flooded lead acid battery in which the concentration or specific gravity of the electrolyte increases from the bottom to the top of the cell. Stratification is generally the result of undercharging or not providing enough overcharge to gas and agitate the electrolyte during the finishing charging. Prolonged stratification can result in the bottom of the plates being consumed while the upper portion remaining the in good shape, reducing the battery life and capacity. Tall stationary cell typically of large capacity are particularly prone to stratification when charged at low rates. Periodic equalization charges thoroughly mix the electrolyte and can prevent stratification problem. The specific gravity is defined as the ratio of density of solution to the density of the Water, you already know that, typically measured with a hydrometer. By definition, water has a specific gravity of 1. In lead acid battery, the electrolyte is diluted solution of sulfuric acid and water. In a fully charged battery, the electrolyte is approximately 36% of sulfuric acid by A weight and 25% by volume with the remainder water. The specific gravity of the electrolyte is related to the battery state of charge depending on the design electrolyte concentration and temperature. In a fully charged flooded lead acid battery, the specific gravity of the electrolyte is typically in the range of 1.25 to 1.28 1 at a temperature of 27 degrees centigrade, meaning that the density of electrolyte is between 
1.25 to 1.28 times that of pure water. Sulfation is a normal process that occurs in a lead acid battery resulting from the prolonged operation and a partial state of charge. Even battery which are frequently fully charged suffer from the effect of sulfation as the battery ages. The sulfation process involves the growth of lead sulfate crystal and the positive plate decreasing the active area and the capacity of the cell. During normal battery discharge, the active materials of the plates are converted into lead sulfate. The deeper the discharge, the greater the amount of active material that is converted to lead sulfate. During the, re, uh, during the recharge, the lead sulfate is converted back into the lead dioxide and spun lead on the positive and negative plate, respectively. If the battery recharge soon after being discharged, the lead sulfate converts easily back into the active material. Sulfation is a commonly problem in lead acid battery in many PV applications as the PV area size is to meet the load under average condition and the battery mostly sometimes be used for supply reserve energy during the period of excessive load use of average insulation as a consequence battery in most PV system normally operate for some length of time over a course of a year or a partial state of charge resulting sub degree of sulfation. The longer the period, the greater the depth of discharge, the greater the extent of the sulfation. To minimize sulfation of lead acid battery in photovoltaic system, the PV array is generally designed to recharge the battery on the average daily condition during the worst insulation month of the year. By sizing for the worst month weather, the PV array has the best chance of minimizing the seasonal battery depth of discharge. And a hybrid system using a backup source such as a generator or a wind turbine the backup source can be efficiently effectively used to keep the battery fully charged even the pv array cannot in general proper battery and array sizing will maintain the periodic equalization can minimize the onset of sulfation now after understanding the battery concept what are the components of the battery types of the battery how we are going to design a spv system now we if what we do uh, a stand-alone system itself supply all the energy requirement of the system and does not interact with the grid. Though it is also possible to design a solar PV system that fulfills part of energy requirement using solar PV module and other parts from the grid. Typically, a PV system consists of solar PV module, battery, inverter and charge controller and DCAC or load. Solar PV system designing some of the assumptions. Assumptions which you are going to take, inverter convert DC into AC power with an efficiency of about 90%. Battery charging and discharging cycle efficiency is 90%. Depth of discharge is 80%. Combined efficiency, that is the inverter efficiency and the battery efficiency is nearly about 81%. Sunlight available for 8 hours per day. We have taken the standard like 8 hours per day. You can take as per the data given. Then actual output power that is the 0 0.75 operating factor into PV power rating measured under the standard at condition. Now we have taken the ratings of the energy applications uh, devices. What are the generally rating in the watt? Air conditioner in a room takes 1000 watt central air condition 2000 to 5000 watt. These are not exact values. These are some data taken from uh, some places. CD player 1530 watt, electric dryer 4000 watt, dryer 300 to 400 ceiling 10 to 50 watt, laptop or computer 20 to 75, desktop PC 80 to 200, printer 100 watt, frying pan 1200 watt, portable heater 1500 watt, stock tank heater 100 watt. So these are the typical power rating of the energy applications. Some other devices, water bed heater 400, microwave oven 600 to 1500, refrigerator 200 to 600, table fan 10 to 25. So these are the some standard like for the indecent light 175, 60 and 40 watts, fluorescent 30, 20, 16, 11 watts, coffee maker 800, dishwasher 1200 to 1500. So now uh, what we have to, we have uh, we we can calculate the wattage per day of these application like ceiling fan ceiling fan is uh, 100 watt and it is used for eight hour per day so it uh, the watt hour per day will be 100 watt like if a coffee maker coffee maker will not use for 100 uh, whole day it will use for 0 0.3 hours so 
it will be 180 watt similarly for computer computer if you are using for two hours it will be become 150 watt similarly for refrigerator it is used for nine hours and it will 5400 watt the washing machine is for half hour so it become 188 watt similarly we can calculate the total wattage uses for our household applications and on the basis we uh, take a how much power requirement is there and then we can design our plant like in our case we uh, take a 2 cfl 2 cfl 1818 watt each and 2 fan 60 watt each for 6 hour per day we are using 2 cfl and 2 fan for 6 hour per day battery voltage is 12 volt battery capacity is 120 ampere hour sunlight available is 8 hour per day pv panel power rating is 40 watt hour Battery charging and discharging cycle efficiency is 90%. Depth of discharge is 80%. 0 0.75 is the operating factor. So what we have to do? First, we have to calculate what is our uh, power requirement. What is our total load? What is wh how much uh, we are consuming the power? Like total connected load to PV panel system. So what are the total connected load? Number of units, 2 CFL, 2 into 18 plus fan two fans we are using two into 60 so we are using total 156 watt and for how many are we are using for six hour total watt hour rating is 156 into six so it become 936 watt hour then how find the number of pv panel required for same the actual power output of pv panel the peak power output into operating factor 40 watt hour is given for it is used for 75 percent efficiency so 30 watt the operating factor taken 0 0.75 here can vary between 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 in normal operating condition the power used at the end use the actual power so 30 watt is the actual power actual power is uh, 0.8 into combined efficiency then it becomes 24.3 watt the energy produced by one 40 pan watt panel in a day power at the end use for eight hour per day is 24.3 into 8 hour it become 194.4 watt hour now one panel is producing 194.4 so how many number of panel require for 936 watt hour so what we have to do 936 divided by 194 it comes into a decimal we go to the higher value and it requires the number of panel require is five panel now the battery capacity total watt hour per day into day of autonomy upon battery combined efficiency total watt hour per day is 936 watt hour day of autonomy one hour battery combined efficiency is 72 uh, percent and battery voltage is 12 volt so it become 108.33 ampere hour that is the battery capacity and battery rating battery rating means battery is available at various rating like it is available at 120 rating so 108 divided by 120 it comes to 0 0.9 again we go to higher value so number of battery require is one now inverter inverter rating is total load connected to the pv channel uh, pv system 156 watt or 156 voltage ampere inverter are available at the rating of 100 200 500 so we will not go for 100 because we require 156 so we go for 200 therefore the choices should be 200 volt ampere now when we calculate the cost aspect for two F running the two cfl and two fan for six hour per day the cost will be number of pv panel into cost like we require five panel the cost is eight thousand the total cost comes out to be forty thousand similarly for running the whole operation we require one battery the battery cost is seven thousand five hundred so it total cost is seven thousand five hundred and the cost for inverter one inverter is required so total cost is 5000 the total cost of a panel plus battery plus inverter it comes out to be 52500 additional cost of wiring 5% may be taken into the system so this by this method we are going to design a pv system so this is the whole aspects about the pv panel system battery and how we are going to design a system one aspect you can also see here we have taken only uh, two bulb and two fan 
you can take we you you can uh, you can change this problem you can take large number of devices you can uh, develop the case study for your whole house or for a classroom or a, for a library or for any system or for any hotel or for any uh, type of devices where all various appliances are there the cost will go on higher side it, uh, the power requirement will be more so bo mo mostly the various type of problem can be developed with the with this power rating and the panel or battery and it it is an actual use you can actually design and calculate the actual data so all this from my side if you have any doubt we can uh, discuss uh, hello yes ha ah, sir uh, dear participant uh, if any query related to this presentation please ask to the sir one query from in chat box sir ah uh, one is the ppt i am going to send this ppt to the coordinator and you can get the ppt from there pv panels are made up of cadmium copper nickel and have a large uh, lc cost compared to the other renewable how can we first completely sustainable defining so sustainability means meeting our own without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their uh, own need the material use for photovoltaics are finite and not the economical to and disposal of the panel after life issue please explain okay i am uh, going to discuss about this problem uh, by taking another example if let's say uh, when we talk about uh, solar energy assume the condition 15 year or 20 year back let's say uh, we are in year, uh, year 2000 uh, or 2001 or 2002 when we talk about the energy from the solar no one believe that solar energy can be implemented at a ground level because due to its cost due to its cumbersome design but within the shorter period of time within to 10 15 year we have achieved this now when we talk about your problem that the material and everything we are going to find the alternative of all these the research are going on and we are going to find the alternative in these area also now when we talk about the solar the cost at the starting time was 16 to 20 rupees per unit we 10 to 15 year back now recently when uh, uh, i heard a uh, one newspaper in that the cost was nearly about 1.8 to 2 rupees per unit so no one can believe that it is possible and even you see how rapidly we are uh, uh, constructing these larger ultra uh, solar power project or this uh, mega park of uh, solar uh, panels so by in coming years you can see the there will uh, there are various technology which are, which will be available one uh, one ha uh, one aspect which uh, you have not raised that the availability of the land also and when we develop when we talk about the development of the this uh, solar power plant or so everyone talks about how where is the land availability so uh, in in you have also watched the video on the youtube and recently in gujarat also few year back they have uh, developed the the install the this solar panel on the canal so what are the benefits the canal water which were lost due to the evaporation that was saved the land area does not require for the this installation of the solar panel so these type of we i cannot say this is the uh, this is this is uh, applicable everywhere but this type of, uh, type of innovations comes into the picture china also developed this floating type of uh, solar power plant we are also in developing phase there so these type of technologies come uh, are going to come into a picture in a recent year and that will change Uh, another example when i the my whole session was on battery you start the uh, how we behave uh, how the battery system in a mobile changes before uh, before that we, we we are not before for 10 to 15 year no one have uh, imagine that we are going to use more internet on a mobile uh, rather than call 
before 10 15 year we are using more calls from our mobile phone but nowadays what we are using we are using more internet or data from our mobile phone no one believes that if you have uh, tell this 10 to 15 year back now in uh, within 10 to 15 year time you will see that uh, when in your mind you will think that this should be done so there will be devices they will complete that task in 10 to 15 years those devices will come into the picture so similarly in the area of the solar also we are going to find the various type of alternative to harness the energy from the sun any other questions sir in chat box one other, another guy right how can we make it commercially, commercially viable, viable. Uh, solar energy is already very viable in my house also we have installed the spv system uh, actually what government is doing government is promoting the solar energy and uh, if you go to the various policies of the government they are giving the subsidies on this installation of the solar panel in your house there are various ways one you can use the even you can install the solar panel on your rooftop or a spaces available and then you can harness the energy and you can use it for your own purpose that is the one task uh, one way in which the government will give the subsidy on the installation of the solar panel. Other, other is that, uh, other, other way is that you install the solar panel, government will give the subsidy, you will produce the power, but power is not required by you, you will supply it to the grid. They will purchase in our institute at Manit Bhopal, the, there is a large solar power plant uh, at a rooftop and it supplies the electricity to the grid and they will discount the all the discounts are given in terms of the this money when they are giving the electricity bills the whole power consumption supply to the grid and they reduce the cost when they are giving supply to us so that type of methodology or technique is government is provided to the customers so more people are moving towards this technology other than that, uh, you go to the Solar Yatra, it is running by Professor Chetan Singh Solanki of uh, IIT Bombay. He, he is developing various type of solar devices which are uh, which can be used in a rural area. So that type of apply, uh, appliances which uh, the people which, which are not connected to the grid, they can use those appliances for their uh, own need they can uh, they, they can have a bulb lighting and they and they can run a small fan with those appliances so you can go to the solar yatra on his website and you can uh, uh, study about those uh, appliances and his uh, motivation behind the solar energy ah one question but a solar panel on the rooftop takes 25 years to break even uh, we uh, yes it is there in every in uh, in every technology we have some uh, positive aspect and negative aspect like uh, now i start there your uh, next session is on alternative fuel you will run uh, when you study about the alternative fuel also you will find out that in all the alternative fuels all except hydrogen only hydrogen except hydrogen all the alternative fuels are costly as compared to conventional fuel but government is promoting them when you talk about the ethanol or any other fuel the cost is on higher side but government is promoting why government is promoting because we are more focusing on the clean and green environment so that is the one aspect so we have to compromise between the cost and they and the when we talk about the break even there are subsidies available now. government is giving the subsidy so they are promoting it so in coming year it there will be a technology which will reduce the cost of this uh, solar if you can compare it with the 10 15 year back to now and then to next 10 to 15 years so uh, we uh, it is better to use the clean uh, clean technology or going to uh, uh, going towards this uh, conventional source of thermal power plant or coal coal based power plant Ultimately, we have to move from those coal-based power plants to these sources of energy because our population is increasing, land area is limited. So we have to find out this alternative source of energy also. Uh, 
डियर पार्टिसिपेंट एनी अदर क्वेश्चन सर एंड देर इज नो क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द पार्टिसिपेंट सो ओके सर सो कैन यू बाइंड अप सर ओके सर थैंक यू सर तो अभी थैंक यू सो मच सर तो अभिषेक एम एस प्लीज वाइंड अप द सेशन yes sir thank you sir on behalf of all the coordinator myself and a participant i would like to extend a sincere thanks for sparing a time from your busy schedule to prepare a such a informative lecture and pro to provide a valuable information for us sir very uh, warm thank you sir thank you so much sir uh, thank you very much for inviting me thank you dear participant uh, our next technical session is start from 2:30 so we, we go for the lunch and we meet at 2:15 sir okay thank you thank you everyone and uh, already uh, that uh, feedback form will be sent uh, say, uh, session first and session 2 so those who are not feel please fill it first okay sir thank you sir
Thank you. 